Shalom everybody, this is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira. Today we can give you this announcement and, and give you a brief teaching here from uh, inside one of the most incredible places you can ever want to imagine. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask my cameraman to show them up and down where I'm at. I am inside the uh, compound of the great Portuguese uh, synagogue right here in Holland. So I want you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine this place 400 years ago. What did it look like 400 years ago? First of all, there wasn't this building that says here, I will come in your mercy and I will come to your house, okay? And then there is the year that this great compound was established. Let's talk about this. So everybody know the story of the, of the Spanish Inquisition. What happened to the Jewish people? How did they get, how did they get to Amsterdam? Well, well, the, the Jews went to two places. Some Jews, the less wealthy Jews, they went to South and Central America. But those who actually could, could leave after 1492, after the Spanish Inquisition, those who could leave ended up leaving to uh, Amsterdam and with one goal. Imagine 80 years later, with one goal, they are coming here to restore the Jewish faith. Okay, they're coming in, they're obsessed, and they're saying we will do whatever it takes to do that. So what did they do? They built this incredible uh, um, um, compound, and in a second I will show you this compound. And the very first thing, if you don't mind, just bring him to this wall. The very first thing that is being established is right here behind me. It's the Etz Chaim Library. The, the house of study and, and they are establishing here the greatest publishing house in, 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 in Europe. The Anusim, now they've been stranger from uh, Judaism for 80 years, for about two generations. So basically they knew their grandparents were Jewish, are establishing here uh, a great publishing house. You see here, you can see Sifriyat, Sifriyat Etz Chaim. They're establishing it and they are going to do whatever they can to restore themselves back to Judaism. So this is the beginning. And only about 75 years later, Look at this incredible, incredible synagogue. Only about 75 years later, they're coming back here and they're building the synagogue. First, they restore the knowledge and the education. And a matter of fact, they start building this compound here. And I will show you some of this compound. One of the very first things that they're doing, they're building this uh, as a library, starting to raise their youth. This is, this is what it's going to take. For those who are, who are from Spanish descent, you're probably not going to see the complete restoration. It's probably going to take two generations to be able to do this type of work. So start with your youth. This is a great lesson for us today. And the reason we're talking about this today, to get today with you, is I have a great desire in the month of September to do our root trips. So to all the Sfaradim, to all the Spanish descendants, to bring them here with me. So if you are from Spanish descendants and you want to come and be with me and to come to uh, experience some of the journey of the Sfaradim and the Anusim, uh, then I encourage you to come, to come and register. Uh, we are thrilled to be able to come and bring a group here. And if everything works as, as well as expected, we should be able to pray inside this synagogue with the Jewish community on Saturday. There is still today a small Portuguese uh, synagogue and I'm working right now on uh, a plan to be able to come here for Shabbat morning prayer with uh, the Portuguese synagogue. So if you are interested in joining me to this special prophetic time, uh, this, is, this is the time that we would want to hear from you. In a second, we'll go inside of this. But I want you to notice before a synagogue is established, uh, 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 the Keilah, the community, have to be established first as a Jewish community. So one of the things that I will take you now to is the, what's called the small synagogue. This is not the main synagogue. Come with me. And I want you to notice something about the small synagogue here. Absolutely incredible. This is still an active synagogue today. Come, come on inside. 
And here, actually, we have our records, if you can kind of start to come from here, from 40, 54, 60, I don't know if you can catch it, but actually going before this, for 54, 24, the name of the Jewish people who came by boats, we actually have when we know their name. Now, the one of the things I wanted to notice here on the names, let's look if you don't mind coming here. Some of the names are very Jewish names. Like here we see here the name, if you see the name of Barbanel, okay, or the name Cohen. Those are very Jewish names, okay, but some of the names are not very Jewish. I mean, they don't seem Jewish, at least. Henry Quest, Barboza, uh, Curiel, Pinto, De Costa, Costa, uh, Salam, Curiel. You see those names repeat again and again. And, and they're coming here for one, for one purpose. They're coming here to restore. They restore their, their Jewishness. Where you can show them the, the traditional synagogue that is put here. You can imagine in the winter the Jewish people are sitting here and they are davening. And notice how they facing each other. This is uh, definitely a Sephardic, Sephardic influence synagogue when people facing facing one another. They are praying toward one another uh, upstairs, of course, for the women. Okay. And I want us to continue to go, and, and you notice the Jewish people continue to come here. Here are some of the names. Let's continue here. Alison, Demeza, Bravo, Morao. Levi, of course, is Jewish, but some of those names are not Jewish. And here we see that there is a very special plaque here for the year 54. Uh, 88 to kind of announce that the, uh, the, the, the welcoming of, of, of additional Jewish people who are coming. Remember, they're coming here speaking Spanish and Portuguese. The majority of the people who came here, they are coming from Portugal. And throughout these walls, we see their names. And, and, and you have to understand, they're coming here as completely goyim. They are not Jews. They already accepted a lot of them. Uh, except the Pinto, the Pena, you know, a lot of them are uh, uh, requesting, uh, accepting Catholicism, but now they want to, to come back and to be restored. So let's see some of the under, under name. We have Vias, Vias is one of the names. Uh, Henry Quest, we see, we see this name used a lot. Uh, let's see, uh, the Ateus, Korea. So, you know, today, if you have one of those names, it is more than likely, it is more than likely that you are connecting, connected to the Jewish, uh, Jewish ancestries uh, that come here. So we have a very detailed record of all the Jewish people who are coming here. But remember, they have a huge task ahead of themselves, and the task that they have ahead of themselves is to restore themselves back to the house of Israel. And that story is a very difficult story to tell because it's a story that spans at least over 150 years. First, they, they established the Bet Midrash, they established the Yeshiva, and only then later they established the, um, the synagogue here. And again, it's important for us to notice here, wow, well, let's, let's look. You know, this is kind of like the place they used to meet. You can show them. You know, check this out. They used to sit here, the Jewish community. That's the way the synagogue, the great synagogue that we're about to go in, that's the way it used to look. Okay, and I hope that many of you are, would love to come and spend some time here with me and, uh, and, and, and connect with this wonderful place, especially if you have a Spanish or a Portuguese uh, 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 relationship in your, in your ancestry. So they're coming here, and they're establishing first Bet Midrash, come. They're establishing Kashrut, they, 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 they establish kosher laws, okay? They also, they also uh, establish, let's say uh, walk, they also establish uh, a mikveh, they establish a mikveh, and in the middle of all of this is this incredible structure that stands, is what's known as the Great Portuguese Synagogue. The same synagogue that uh, we're about to walk into was there. But remember, there was a challenge. And what was the challenge? The challenge with knowledge 
and in a tutor, former mikveh, you said this is a bit of mikveh, you know. So continue, we will continue to go forward. So remember, remember the story here that uh, there was a man named Shabtai Tzvi. Shabtai Tzvi was raised up. He is uh, raised up to become the Messiah over, over the community here. And about 50%, okay, here you go, you still have a, a mikveh, a walking mikveh here. Now, the story about Shabtai Tzvi is a very, very interesting story. In a second, you will say, by the way, this is to get up to the ladies, to the ladies area. So this is still structured as an as a orthodox synagogue. In a moment, we will walk inside the synagogue. We will see this. You remember that they're coming here. They know a little bit of the language. They know that they are Jewish, but they say, hey, where do we go from now? And you will notice something about the synagogue. The synagogue inside is not, you know, the most impressive one. Look, there's a sukkah even standing here just available for, for them. And when they come on in here, the Shabtai Tzvi and the establishing of all the education, remember the Zohar start to be printing here and these charismatic Jewish leaders say, hey, I'm the Messiah and I'm going to take all the Jews out of Europe. I will take all the Jews out of Europe and I will bring them into the land of Israel. He go to the king of Turkey and he says, to him, hey, hey, let me let my people go because he thought he was the new Moses. <laughs> well, that was a mistake. The king tell him that he have two choices. He either convert to Islam or he kills him. This man is at this point followed by half of Europe as the Messiah. OK, and a matter of fact, the reason that the building is not, they did not continue to work on it, because it said, oh, these, okay, you see, they have a candle, candle room. they have so many treasures here inside that, uh, that uh, are uh, things that we would like to take people to, to show them, to explain to them. They used to be here on the Shabbat, thousands of light, how did they lit the place? Thousands of candles lit. It was quite a spectacular view, you know, to be able to light up this thing. And... Where was I in the story of Shabtai Tzvi? Oh yes, they wrote a letter to Shabtai Tzvi, the community here. They didn't know that he converted to Islam. And they say to Shabtai Tzvi, hey, where are you? We really want you to come and take us to Israel. We're not going to continue work on the building because we know you're coming to redeem us. And it's signed by the great Jewish community. The original letter is actually here. The problem was Shabtai Tzvi converted to Islam. So you can kind of see some of the difficulties here there are there are brand new jews okay they just returned to judaism but as they return to judaism they are uh, suffering now with following the false messiah so now we are ready to walk into the inside inside the synagogue the great synagogue and you will understand why although the structure is incredible why inside they didn't put more gold and so forth because this, the reality, the answer in short is simple. They expected the Messiah to come and to take them back to the land of Israel. So let's go inside and look inside. Everybody should know that this synagogue is still working synagogue today on Shabbat. On Shabbat, people using it. Okay, come. Oh, is that both off? So you can imagine that each one of those seats was like a sign for a person. And the Portuguese had a very special blessing that the, only the Portuguese make. They don't say Shabbat Shalom, they have a very unique blessing. And a very unique way they store their, their Torah, their, 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 their filling and, and everything else that is quite unique to the Portuguese community, which is one of the... Uh, Restoration was there, so let's let's get closer and what? Do you know the blessing? Uh, I, I, I don't want to say it wrong, but I will know it today when I meet my friend, my Portuguese expert. Yes, yes, yes. So, in matter of fact, you can see here a real dedication. Remember, they are in Holland, but they don't speak Dutch. They are speaking Portuguese. Very interesting. And you see here the full dedication of the synagogue 
of the year 5435 with the verse from Exodus 25 verse 8 They will make me a sanctuary and I will dwell inside of them. That is the passage here and we see and some of the people, the founder of the synagogue, we have Itzhak the Pinto, Moshe Curiel, Itzhak, Abol de Fonseca. Those are some of the founders of this particular uh, synagogue and, and you can also see from their name that they are it's not exactly Jewish names, but they were Jews, you know. And here, of course, they stole the Torah. And, and we can see the replica up there of the Ten Commandments. And I tell you, just being here and thinking about the acoustics of this place, right? A, a cantor would stand there facing the Torah. If you come from Again, imagine, come from this angle, I would like to, to show the people, the chazan, the cantor, stand right there. And as he lead the prayer, the shacharit morning prayers, he's praying straight toward the floor, to the Torah. You know, absolutely incredible, because the way the place is being built up, if you say, ah, you heard the, 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 uh, echo it would have been absolutely amazing amazing to be able to pray and dove in here and just close your eyes and imagine the people are standing from both sides and they're facing each other it's, it would be absolutely glorious so this synagogue has been actively used now for over 400 years and this is the the very first the original anusim uh, synagogue as you notice here though there is, uh, there is some, uh, some, some uh, already, there's the, it's very plain. I, I want to make it clear, look, look, show them. At the end of the day, it's very, very plain, and, uh, but it's beautiful, but plain at the same time. And the reason is, again, they were sure that they are just here for a very short time before the Messiah, the Messiah will come. So here, who was sitting here? That was the seats of the elders in the community. The elders used to be sitting, sitting right here. Quite incredible. So what we are doing, we are planning a trip, a, a, route, a route trip. Uh, it will be available. Yes, you have to come to uh, uh, Amsterdam on, on your own dime and there is some cost involved. But we are planning a, a route trip here that will include to go inside the library, which is, is a place that is not available. It's not available privately, publicly to anybody, but through Hashem mercy and grace, God has opened the door for our yeshiva and our group to come here. So if you're interested in coming to uh, a route tour, especially if you're Spanish uh, descendant, uh, it will be in September. Uh, write us, we would love to bring you here with us and, and to see you here. And then on Shabbat morning, if everything works as expected, we will be praying here with the Jewish uh, community. And that will be a very, very special time. So um, anyway, this is a little bit about the Portuguese uh, community. Um, our heart and desire is to see everybody restored those from a Spanish and Portuguese descent, but those who are well, even not, to see all the full restoration of all things into the God of Israel and to the Messiah of Israel. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this brief, brief lesson from the great Portuguese uh, synagogue. I hope to see you uh, soon. Write us if you are interested. God bless you. Later.